So I'm very excited to be testing these clubs today, a premium blade, at least in appearance, that undercuts the competition massively on price. So these irons are from Haywood Golf. Now stay tuned to this video because I'm gonna be heading out onto the back nine of the L's course here, and it's pretty simple. If these manage to beat my Mizuno irons in a little competition that I've devised, they're gonna be going into the back. So these are the Haywood MB signature irons. And the first thing that I have to say is, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> So these cost $799 from three to pitch and wedge. Now they're a forged muscle back design. And just to put this in perspective, the same set, so with my Mizunos, from four to pitch and wedge would cost you $1,800. So these are $1,000 cheaper than the clubs that I currently have in my back. But the question we need to be asking ourselves is are these a thousand dollars cheaper as far as performance are concerned or are they an actual competitor that more people should be looking at but 176 back to this hole location i'm going to go seven iron and automatically if it is a hole in one then the irons automatically go into the bag that's written into uh, the hole in one contract that i've signed with the devil so we've got these in x100 shafts well it's absolutely bang on line Sit down, that might be massive. Sit down. Oh, no, it's absolutely perfect. Well, I'll say absolutely perfect, it's pin eye. So I'll be using this Haywood putter during the round. I'm not gonna do a full review on this. He just looks like a Scotty Cameron slash answer putter. And I've had a few putts on the putting green. Um, did actually hold the world, but it's just, um, yeah, it's all right. It's just a nice looking putter. To hold this though, it's going in the bag. <laughs> imagine opening up the vlog with a baby. Yeah, I take it back. I'm not massively keen on the look of this putter. Looks a bit chunky. Like I said, I love this putter, best one of oh. <laughs> so Haywood Golf are based in Canada, and it took about three weeks to ship the clubs over to me. Although I do think they are opening up a distribution center in the UK, which would make it easier over in the UK, obviously, but then into Europe. Don't quote me on that. I don't have their full plans in my pocket. So I absolutely love my Mizunos. So if the Haywoods took the place of those Mizunos, you can rest assured that I really, really do like these irons. I've had a little bit of a test out of them already this morning and I was pretty impressed. Not completely bowled over, not fully in love, but starting the romance, kind of second date stage. You're not quite sure about the family, you know. I can't remember the last time I went on a second date. I have literally no idea. What did you talk about on a second date? Um, so on the first day, we found out that the favorite movie was Shawshank Redemption, so that's solid. But now they've got like a pen sharp for thrash metal and you're not sure if they're gonna grow out of it. By the way, the three iron in these signature MBs is, uh, it is thin. Well, let's just have a check. Not quite that sharp, but getting there. So the process of ordering these Haywoods was pretty simple. You go onto the website, you select which iron you want. I went for the signature MBs, the bladed version, but you could also get the signature irons. They're a little bit bigger, a little bit more forgiving. These, these are not forgiving. On the website, there are custom fit options. So you can adjust the lofts by up to two degrees, either stronger or weaker. And you can also adjust the lie angle, either two degrees upright or two degrees flat. And I actually selected mine to be flat. Both of those are a $25 upcharge. I got these with a dynamic gold X100. You can also get an upcharge on dynamic gold tour issue and also project X shafts. And that's a $225 upcharge. So you can start to see where the costs would increase slightly with these clubs. But apart from the line will change, I just went for everything in stock. You can also get the feral changed. I just went for the standard one, but you can get lots of other fancy options for another $25 upcharge if you're into that kind of thing. If you're a feral fiend, if you've got a feral fetish, if you're a fan of the feral. Let's hit a, oh, should we try and hit a dirty stinger? Okay. So the most important test of the day so far, it is the dirty stinger challenge. Now the dirty stinger challenge is pretty simple. You uh, put the ball back in your stance, you try and keep it really low. That left building, that's what I'm gonna try and keep it going up and down. A little bit of a draw back into the breeze. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Oh, that is dirty. That is Christine Aguilera in a nightclub in the 90s dirty. Want to get bound up, whatever the, what's the word? Round up, mound up, bound up, want to get bound up, want to get dirty. It's about time for my arrival. I'm also using these Haywood wedges today. Now this is the forge version, 60 degree. Again, I might do another video on this. I've not been kind of blown away to begin with, but it does require a little bit more hitting and testing though. I don't want to 
dismiss them straight off. The only problem I've found so far with the Haywood model is it really does depend if you know what specs you need. And from my experience, from coaching amateurs, from being around amateurs, that's not always the case. And the fact is that different clubs will give you different flight characteristics. So me getting fitted for a set of Mizunos compared to me getting fitted for a set of Callaways, for example, I might come out with different shafts, different loft types. So that's the big issue I'm finding at the moment. And also with the irons that I got, you can't get them in left-handed, which is obviously a shame. So after two dirty, stingy three irons, I have myself, I would say, 45 yards left. And what I'm gonna do is the uh, 60 degree wedge, I'm gonna put it slightly back in my stance. The grass is growing into me, so this is gonna take a slightly bigger divot than I would like, but it's gonna stop on the first bounce and probably go in for an eagle. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna fat the ball just short of the green because let's face it, I wanted another hit um, with the lob wedge. If you're confident about knowing your specs, then there's no reason why this can't work for you. In this direct-to-consumer model, it's only gonna become more popular as the years go by. Okay, we are about to begin the battle of the blades on the golf course, but I did just wanna talk through a few of the differences between these and my Mizunos. I think shelf appeal-wise, so if that was on the shelf, so with the Haywood and the blade, it looks unbelievably sexy. It is so, so nice. But when you put it behind the ball, for me, the Mizuno is still a better looking iron. These just look a little bit, a little bit more flared, a little bit more spoony. The Mizunos for me look a tiny bit more boxed off and I actually quite like that. That's to take nothing away from these Haywood irons because, because for the price of them, I think they look stunning. They look really, really nice. I'm not too sure about the wearability, the wedges, they're not looking great even after a couple of rounds. But I think these forged irons, yeah, these are gonna be cool. So just a par four, just gonna knock it down the fairway, use this three iron again. Very confident about knocking it down the fairway. But that's why. Yeah, very, very, very impressed. But now the competition begins. The battle for the bag. Who will come out on top over nine holes here at the Ells Club? But I also need to take you to the range, and I'll do that shortly, to actually talk about the differences in lofts, flight characteristics, and what you would expect between this and a real premium blade within the MP20s. So let the battle commence. We have MP20 MMC 4-iron versus the signature MB forged. Now, I only go up to the 4-iron within my MP20, so that means I can't be using the 3-iron in the Haywoods, which is a shame, actually, because I've really enjoyed hitting that. But the battle is quite simple. We're going to give points for fairways hit and greens in regulation, so not a classic stroke play comp, because that very much depends on how well I put as well, which is <laughs> never a guarantee. So first hole here, 379s. We're going to go, we'll go Mizuno first. Ball I'm using, by the way, is the Callaway Chrome Soft today. Both these irons actually look really good in the longer irons. For me, as the Haywoods, the lofts get higher, the worse the irons actually look. The pitching wedge in the Haywood is not my cup of tea at all. It just looks like a big kind of spoony frying pan on the end of a stick. It's not very nice. But then with the longer irons, I think they look really cool. Just a bit weird how much that change is evident. And remember, looks are a very personal preference. Four iron, left-hand side of the fairway. Just a nice smooth swing. That felt nice as well. Oh, sit, sit, sit. Wow. Haywood definitely has an advantage now. I'm just going to aim a little bit further right. <laughs> Again, very, very nice looking as far as the iron's concerned in the four. Oh, my word. Wind, help it in. And that's Mr. Fairway right. So for a first hole, that's zero, zero. <laughs> No idea what this building is called, but it's got golf clubs stuck to it. So that means it's the uh, best building in Dubai. The Burj Al Golf Club. It's a marked difference when you stick the A-tines down behind each other. Like the Mizuno just looks, it just looks better. I mean, I'm not an expert in design at all, but it just looks a little bit more polished. It just looks a little bit more finished. It, it just looks a little bit more, it just looks better. There you go. Top reviews, Peter Finch, 2020. We'll go Haywood first, 150 now. I'm actually expecting the Mizuno to be going a bit further because as we'll have a look at on the range, the lofts are a little bit different with these two sets. Uh, wind's not really touched that one. However, clubbing is good. Now, can we get closer? So I'm gonna have to take a little bit off the A-tine with the Mizuno. It's a little bit closer, I think. Oh, it's massive. 
You see that going to the back bunker? Wow. So Haywood wins that one. And that was 150 yards. Haywood is pin high and the Mizuno went massive. So there's at least a club difference between these two. However, the rules of the game, that's more points to Haywood. So tee shot here. I am actually going to use the three iron. So scratch what I said on the last tee and the four iron with the Mizuno because there is going to be such a big disparity between the distances as the approach shot showed with the eight iron. So Haywood first, three iron. I have not yet missed the fairway with this today. Wind is pretty much straight into. Oh, struck that so well, it's just gone a bit left. Yeah, left semi onto the four iron. God, I struck that so well. You can actually, you can physically see that the lofts are pretty much the same with the four and the three. Oh, nothing feels like a Mizuno. So the data will speak to this a little bit more clearly, but here's the four iron with the Mizuno. And we're talking about maybe eight yards of difference there between the two tee shots. Bear in mind, I also pulled and struck the Haywood that little bit better. Now remember, when you're buying irons, the number on the bottom of that club, that's not what is important. It's the loft on those clubs. So your three iron could be a four iron loft, it could be a five iron loft, it could be a two iron loft. As long as you know what those lofts are and as long as you know how to correctly gap them, that's the main thing. But me, I'm obviously used to the distances my Mizunos are going and obviously it feels a little bit better to hit the ball further. But irons are about control. Remember that kids. Don't listen to your uncle Pete. I'm gonna go nine iron and then my 40, 60 degree pitching wedge. I've got a bit of a feeling that these Haywoods, they're a bit balloony. There's not much penetration to them. Just a feeling, it's just a suspicion. Yet to be proved. Could be a baseless accusation. Vokey first, 46 degrees. Wind a little bit off the left. Name the right edge of the back bunker and then just let it drift. A little bit like that. Looked pretty decent. I'm not sure that might be a touch short, but I've got a good understanding of that flight. They do fly well, these Vokies. The higher lofted irons on the Haywood, it's almost like the leading edge bulges out a touch. Held its line really well. Yeah, about pin eye just left, but the fly is just totally different. It's so much higher with the Haywood. So it's 200 yards to clear the cross bunker here on the ninth hole. Good little challenge here between the four and the three. We're going to go Mizuno first. Oh my God, how good did that sound? Well, the Mizuno's flown miles over it. That's gone over the middle of the bunkers. Absolutely rip a doodled. Three iron. Wow, that felt stunning as well. Pretty sure that's over as well. Let's see the distance disparity. I think they went on a very similar line, so it'll be interesting to see the difference. <laughs> well, I said they were on a similar line, didn't I? Look at that. That is an absolute joke. I don't know which one's which. I probably should mark them up, but bonus points all round. <laughs> It goes without mentioning there is a difference in the shafts here. So X100 versus the Tor Issue X100 in my eight iron. So this is the upcharge that you'd actually get on the website. I'm going to go seven iron here from 160. Pins at the back. Ugh. Bit draggy. Mm. Not the best for Mr. Hayward on that occasion. Good. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 205 yards. It feels like the wind is coming down off the right. So I'm going to go five iron with the Mizuno and then four iron with the Haywood. Five iron tight pin that as well. It's also like a high launching five, this one. He says, that's center of the green. And drifting. Oh no, stay. Yeah, it's just a little bit short, a little bit left. Mr. that wind. I think it's maybe more just off the right. So an opportunity here for Haywood to get back in the game. Oh, come on, drift. Oh. That is uh, nil point, nil point. That's zero, zero. So let's have a cutaway to the data. 
So let's do a comparison between the numbers on the driving range. So I've got long irons with the fours, got the mid irons with the six, and then the short irons with the eight. But what I'm gonna do here is just throw up the loft difference because throughout pretty much the whole set, there's a two degree difference. But also the construction of the club heads. I think that the Mizuno, it just gives a bit more of a penetrating flight. I might be wrong about that, but that's what this testing is gonna find out. Now, Haywoods have a progressive blade length. Now, what that means is the eight iron is a little bit shorter in its length than the four iron. Now, the Haywoods have a progressive blade length. Now, that means that the three iron, so the lowest lofted iron that I have in this set, is gonna be longer than the pitching wedge, which is gonna be shorter. So it's almost the opposite to what the Tiger Woods irons are with the tailor made. Long irons are actually shorter in those. Now, they are a blade. So what I'm gonna do, just hit shots here using the quad, getting the data, and then having that little bit of a comparison. So we'll start off with the four irons. Oh, absolutely pure strike. So carry 196, launch angle 13.9. Ball speed at 135 there. So onto the four iron with the Mizuno now. By the way, how amazing does it sound with these buildings around here? It's like echoing off everywhere. And that's more what I'm used to seeing. So carry 211 yards, launch angle just under 13 degrees and a little bit more piercing through the air. So onto the mid irons, and this is where I think the separation does grow a little bit between the two sets. Certainly the lofts are different, but also the look of the irons. I just think the Mizunos look that a little bit better. Is it a thousand dollars better? I'm not sure, but it's better to my eye. So it's just that little bit higher in the launch that I'm used to seeing. Carry 172. So I would say this is more of a traditional feeling loft within the six iron. Now onto the Mizuno six iron. So this is the MP20 MMC, remember, a muscle-backed style. Yeah, it's just that initial launch. It's just that little bit lower, and then it's just piercing through. So carry 190 there, ball speed at 130. So we're talking about a good 20 to 15 yards difference that I've noticed on the course, but also here on the range. And the look differential does continue here into the short iron. So the eight iron and the nine iron that I have in my MP20s, so that's the pure blade kind of design. And that matches and mirrors the eight iron of the Haywood in some respects. But again, I think the Mizuno just has that little bit more refinement. It looks a little bit more squared off. It's more appealing to my eye. Distance wise, again, I expect the Haywood to be down, but that's purely, I think, because of the loft. So I reckon this will be out about 150. So carry there, 149, backspin at 93, launch angle at 22 degrees. Oh, pure as driven snow. So carry up at 165 again, obviously what I'm used to now. The sound between the two is very similar. The feel, I think the Mizuno just about edges it, but we're only talking a very small amount. I think the flight is better with the MP20s across the board. To my eye, I like that low to piercing trajectory. Well, I think the Haywoods are just a little bit higher in their launch. On to the 12th, four iron and three iron. Not gonna tee these up because I wanna be risky. Let's blast through a few holes. Let's get these scores running.
final hole here and we have a lead for my current clubs going into the last but this last hole is what i would call treacherous it's 420 yards here there is water all down the right hand side and what i'm going to be doing is playing this last hole stableford so hitting both balls off the tee and continuing as normal obviously haywood versus mp20 and whatever score i get i will add on my stableford score so if i get a birdie that's three extra points if i get a par that's two so there is potential for Haywood to turn this round at the death. And then we'll just have a little bit of a chat through about the differences between these irons, the benefits, and if I would recommend you actually going out and buying these irons. So the back bunker on the left is 250 yards away. That is going to be my target line for both these shots. Mizuno is current leader, so they have honour on the tee. That's pretty much perfect for Mizuno. Three iron with the Haywood. Oh no, I've fatted it. I've actually fatted it. Sit. That is basically where the lip of the bunker is. That is just okay, I think. Just kind of hopped out near those cranes. 250 left in. Gonna have to absolutely pummel a three iron. It's set up like a peach though, so if I aim it left edge, you can feel the wind picking up a touch. It's got a chance, but it's going to have to get lucky, and I'm going to have to hear the shot of a lifetime. Ah, oh, it's overcutting. That is going to be as dead as a dodo once humans discovered that they wouldn't run away and viciously club them to death. So we'll finish up the hole here. Four iron, 220. Same idea. <laughs> Left side is green, but I just feel I've got a little bit more oomph with this four iron. I reckon this has the, has the beans to actually make the distance. I struck it lovely. It started way too far right though. Go, 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 go. Oh. What I meant to say was I played a very attacking line there and I had never any doubts about the distance control at my disposal. Thank you, thank you very much. Beautifully judged. By the way, I got a bit of, uh, bit of stop on that. Let's spin round, look at David getting the, uh, getting the thumbnail shot. This is the behind the scenes stuff you don't see. The focus, the concentration. All right, so for a birdie and to really kind of hammer home. Oh, greens here are so pure kind of knew like as soon as I hit it it wasn't going to go in about there I actually went to the right rather than the left my uh, eyes clearly aren't adjusted to good greens just yet however that is a par and that is a win for the Mizunos so Haywood lost the overall challenge and therefore will not be going in my bag however are these irons something that you should consider First of all, I would say yes, absolutely. For that price, undercutting those Mizunos by a grand, that is a huge, huge difference. And would the Mizuno's performance warrant that extra thousand dollars? As far as I'm concerned, yes. But please understand, I'm in a position now where I'm reviewing clubs, I'm testing clubs, and I can get most of the things through for free. Now, if you had that decision to make, you know, if you're gonna spend $1,800 versus $800, could I justify to you and say that those Mizunos would make you a thousand dollars better of a player? Maybe not. However, if you are looking at buying a set of blades, it's all about control. It's all about that high-end performance that you're really going to be looking for. And the chances are, if you're going to be buying a set of these types of clubs, you're going to be saving up for them anyway. And let's face it, nothing still feels like a Mizuno. So who is this club for? I would say if you have the budget and you're looking to test out a really good set of blades that you want to buy new and that you don't want to be spending loads and loads of money on, then yeah, these could be great. Go over, check out the website, see what you think. If you're more of an experienced blade player and you're looking for that ultimate performance and control, maybe you should be looking at a Mizuno, at a Titleist Blade, one of the more established brands. And this draws back a little bit again into fitting, because at the end of the day, you might know your specs and you might think you know what you need, but that's nothing if you get yourself in the hands of an experienced fitter. They can really dial down into the numbers and make sure what you're using is absolutely perfect for you. And at this moment in time, unless you just get those Haywoods and then bend them and get them retrofit, is not possible. However, I would absolutely love to know what you think. So get down into those comments. Let me know what you think about these irons, if you have any, if you've used them before, but also what other types of manufacturers are out there and that we should be reviewing. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social media platforms, which again, are all linked in the description below. Big thank you to the Els Club for hosting us today here in Dubai. Absolutely beautiful track. And on a nice, warm, sunny day with blades in my hand, what more could I ask for? Well, ice cream.
that's what I could ask for.